So for those of you who don't know, in February of next year, I have a lecture in New Orleans and it's in front of 150 medical doctors. I talk about meat, keto, and carnivore diet for 45 minutes. And then after that, there's a, a vegan medical doctor, naturopathic doctor. He speaks for 45 minutes. And then we sit and we debate each other and we take questions from the audience. So I got to know my stuff. I know my stuff because the vegan started to attack me in 2017 on my YouTube channel. And I'm thinking to myself, why are they saying the things they say? Who are their leaders? Why are they saying the things they say? And I know why they say the things they say, because they're looking at observational studies, which is not science. But in the meantime of figuring this stuff, kind of stuff out, I stumbled upon, I'm, I've been on TikTok. It went viral in the summer. And then in the early fall, I went viral. And so people are tagging medical doctors in my comments. And they want the medical doctors to critique my content. And there's four medical doctors. One of them is Dr. Terry Simpson. He's a weight loss doctor that promotes the Mediterranean diet, which is a total failure for weight loss. We've known this for 70 years. And I called him out on it, and then he blocked me. Another person is Dr. Muhammad Allo. And the reason why I remember him is because he actually went to the same high school that I went to. So I've been careful to say the things to him that I would say to other doctors, but I've been watching his videos and he says, eat, uh, you know, seed oils, canola oils, healthy, you know, the worst, worst oils, they're healthy. Meat is bad, saturated fat is bad, eggs are bad, butter is bad. And it's like, why is he saying that? But he's got, and I, then I've been watching a guy on YouTube, the channel is called Nutrition Made Simple. He's an MD, PhD. I'm going to show you him as Dr. Gill. And he has the science. He's got randomized clinical double-blind placebo-controlled trials that show that meat is bad and canola oil is good. And he's got, um, of course, epidemiological observational studies showing lower mortality by eating seed oils. Meat causes heart attacks. And he's got really good science to back up what he says. But I know things that he doesn't know. So I'm gonna get it. I so I went into that last week showing that seed oils destroy tissue. Even though seed oils do not raise LDL, they harm the eyes, they harm hormones, they cause atherogenesis, they cause pain, they they um, they cause um, they ruin breast milk for, so that kids have lower cognitive and physical development at age two and three. So I got like. I think it was 18 studies showing all these factors about how seed oils destroy the tissue. So just because they lower LDL is meaningless. And that's all the cardiologists say. It lowers LDL, therefore it's good. Bacon raises LDL, therefore it's bad, right? And LDL is linked to heart disease. But what I've discovered is that LDL is like rocket fuel for your immune system. So the moment you cut out the seed oils, and you start eating bacon and fatty, you know, steaks, whether they're fatty or not, doesn't matter. You know, burgers, pork, that kind of stuff. The LDL goes up. And then all the regular cardiologists, all the vegans, all the vegetarians say, oh, it's bad, it's bad, stop it. Go on the vegetarian diet. But LDL is strong, it's a rocket fuel for the immune system. And so it, the LDL helps the body go after the infection that's causing the heart disease. Heart disease is an infection, and something like this can fix it. Diabetes is an infection, and meat fixes it, but your LDL might go up. So what? Now, if you're eating junk food and your LDL goes up, that's bad. And there's physiology behind that. There's two types of LDL particles. One is small and dense and is unnatural. The body does not make small, dense LDL. It becomes small and dense because of seed oils and um, junk food. And then you have large, fluffy LDL. And that is really good and healthy. And so the more large, fluffy LDL you have, the better your immune system is. Now, your LDL could be 500. As long as it's large and fluffy, you're in good shape. But if your LDL is 200 and it's, or, or 90, and it's small, dense, you're, it's at, you're at risk. Okay, so at risk, that's another tricky statement.
What are the useful blood markers for heart diseases? People talk about things like LDL, ApoB, ApoA. Well, I mean, triglycerides need to be down. As long as triglycerides are down and VLDL is below 19, then everything else is pretty good because your A1C is going to come down, your glucose is going to come down, and then your LDL can be 800. I don't care how high that goes. Is your, is, as long as your blood sugar is under control, your lipids can be anywhere. Now, I've had a number of people who have a chronic infection, maybe in their jaw, maybe somewhere else, and it keeps the blood glucose up. You know, just keep that in mind. And the infection keeps the LDL up. And then, then we'll talk about um, how the infection turns to stone. We have to talk about that. How would you know if LDL is dense or large? Or and fluffy. There's a there's a test. It's called um, LDL particles. It's actually particle size because it measures HDL and LDL particle size. And I think when we order it, I think the price is ninety seven dollars or ninety eight dollars. So there's that. We order it through uh, LabCorp. The blood draws at LabCorp, so we can order for anybody nationwide except for the states that prevent us from doing that, like New York. So this study says the effects of inflammation and infection on lipids and lip lipoproteins. So it's combined lipids, uh, infection, and, and uh, inflammation. So during inflammation slash infection, you get the same thing as a diabetic. Increased triglycerides, decreased HDL, increased small dense LDL, increased lipoprotein A, oxidase LDL, dysfunctional HDL. Like that's, if you're a cardiologist, you say, oh, you have heart disease. If you're an endocrinologist, you say, oh, you have diabetes based on those labs right there. But no, it's an infection. Beneficial effects of lipoproteins, redistribute of nutrients to immune cells that are important in host defense. LDL and HDL, they carry sugar. They feed the body. They feed the immune system. LDL is a bus to carry triglycerides. Triglycerides are three glycerins. That's sugar. Lipoproteins bind endotoxins. What? So you have an infection. You have bacteria. They're releasing their chemicals. Those are endotoxins. Lipoproteins, like LDL, will bind onto that endotoxin. It's a detoxifier. And it'll bind onto lipotychoic acid, viruses and other biological agents and prevent something, something. It got cut off. Lipoproteins bind urate crystals. So there's a lot of people now talking more about uric acid as a sign of diabetes. Uric acid just comes, comes from eating too much sugar. Okay, lipoproteins bind and target parasites. What? LDL is anti-parasitic? LDL binds parasites so that something else can destroy the parasite, like white blood cells. And then apolipoproteins neutralize viruses. Apolipoproteins also lyse or split parasites. Infection is one of the most common causes of insulin resistance and diabetes. Those are not my words. That came from Google. Acute infections can increase insulin resistance, such as even COVID or flu, infection is a common cause of insulin resistance. High, this is, here's a study, high cholesterol may protect against infections and atherosclerosis. Well, here's some examples of infections known to cause atherosclerosis. Chlamydia, um, this is porphyromonas gingivalis. That's from the teeth. A bacteria hiding out in your teeth is known to cause atherosclerosis in your heart. H. pylori, famous for causing ulcers in the stomach, causes heart disease. There's flu virus, hepatitis virus, CMV, cytomegalovirus, known for causing chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. HIV, very famous, right? Can cause placking in the arteries around the heart. Herpes, simplex viruses one and two. So genital one and this one. And then the Merrick's disease, I don't know what that is. 
I should research that, I guess. And then a few more, Coxsackie virus, adenovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, fatigue, chronic fatigue there. They all cause inf infection in the heart. So endocarditis caused by bacteria. This occurs when bacteria and blood cells form clumps on the heart valves. These clumps can break free into the bloodstream and block other blood vessels. Pericarditis can be caused by parasites. So the point is, how many cardiologists look for infection in the heart, on the valves, in the arteries? It's a common thing. And especially when people are eating junk food, 57% of Americans, I'm sorry, 57% of Americans diet or calories is junk food. So you have seed oils, they destroy tissue. You got a lot of high fructose uh, sweeteners. They cause fatty liver that destroys tissue. Now you have dead tissue. What happens with dead tissue? It turns to calcium, it turns to stone. The last ingredient is, um, it says, editate disodium dicalcium. And so it's related to EDTA, which is a drug in the emergency rooms that medical doctors will do an IV when somebody has acute mercury exposure. So let's say you have a mercury bulb, fluorescent bulb, and it breaks and you breathe in all this mercury and you get real sick. Well, that mercury will then absorb into your tissues within five days. But you can run to the hospital, they'll draw your blood and say, oh, you have high mercury in your blood. So they do IV EDTA. So that drug EDTA then can be transformed into a nutritional supplement. There's about 20 different forms of that. And so here's one of them. So add on, so that's the detoxing agent of mercury, chemi uh, metals, chemicals, radioactive elements here. And then it's got a lot of um, ascorbic acid for the immune system to kill the organism that's the infection. It's got grapeseed extract to kill the infection. It's got foods like hawthorn berry to heal the heart muscle. It's got niacin to flush and increase circulation. And it's got trypsin bromelain to help clean up unwanted proteins. Those are enzymes. This has got amino acids specifically for the muscle, ornithine, lysine, arginine. Uh, lysine and arginine especially to lower um, unwanted um, pathological um, oxidized um, lipoproteins or, or lipids. So it took him, you know, many years to figure this out. And he spent, I think, 20, 20 million of his own dollars to research this. And they took um, the nano, nanobacteria that his scientists discovered in 1998, the nanobacterium, and they saw that it reproduces every six days. So it's hard for medicine to grasp this idea that the reproduction of this super small, you know, 50 times smaller than bacteria can, re can be alive. They can't even grasp that. But there is a phase when the nanobacterium uh, speeds up its process because it's making mucus and biofilm. So now it reproduces every three days. And then they send it to the International Space Station. Did I say this last week? And they, um, and they reproduce every day, once a day, they reproduce out in zero gravity. So there's a ton of research like that. I guess it would cost millions of dollars to do that kind of research, but. Okay, so that's exciting stuff. And now you know it. So natural saturated fats have all these benefits, yes. Where, whereas in, industrial seed oils basically add to all these symptoms of that stuff, right? Seed oils destroy our, our bodies, they kill us. Makes me wonder if any very famous doctor with any traction still promotes industrial seed oils as being superior fats. Yeah, so Dr. Terry Simpson on TikTok, he's got 850,000 followers. And he says, seed oils are good, saturated fat is bad. Dr. Allo, he's got 180,000 followers. Um, Dr. Ids, IDZ, 2 million followers or 1.8 million followers. He says that seed oils are good for you and bacon is bad and butter is bad and and I can, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna gather up all this data. It's gonna take me a little bit. I'm gonna start calling them out. Maybe even tomorrow at lunch, I can do a little bit of calling out and say, look, you can't say this kind of thing because you're killing people and here's why.
Okay, what would be, and oh, and by the way, all the universities and the USDA Dietary Guidelines Committee and all the vegans and all the food, you know, food manufacturers, did I say all the governments? Yeah, all of them, all the cardiologists, they all think that seed oils are good because they lower LDL and that's it. No more talking. That's it. Okay. Have you noticed any specific types or locations of infections that we are most that are most common cause of insulin resistance? Yeah, the teeth in in the jaw, um, bad root canals. Those need to be discovered. But you can have like a toenail fungus. You can have chronic the sinuses are big. It's all the cholera, focal infections things causing that. Could the nanobac clean out a bad root canal? No. No, you got to get the root canals removed and treated properly. <laughs>